Hello people of YouTube, if you found this video, you might be stuck in your own installation, you're looking for some help and some guidance, we're here to do just that. This video is going to cover the complete installation for the 52 inch Rothley ceiling fan by Hampton Bay. We're going to cover everything from unboxing to turning it on. If you want to fast forward the video, there's some links down below, it'll take you to each individual step of the installation. If you find this video helpful, help us out and click like and subscribe. That'll help other people find the video as well. If you're just researching a fan, you're looking for some more information on the Rothley, this video is going to do that too. We're a one-stop shop. We do fans all day. That's all we do. Fans. Look at my channel. It's all fans. Okay, so let's talk features. It's the Rothley. It's tri-mount. can hang it without the down rod on a low ceiling. Standard flat ceiling with the down rod. You can hang it on a higher angled ceiling with an extension down rod. Uses a three-quarter inch diameter down rod. Compatible with anyone on the market. This fan has AccuArm blade arms. Has captive screws. When you're putting them up, it makes a difference in the installation. Much easier. Fan has five reversible blades. These just snap right onto the blade arms. We'll show you in detail during the video how that happens. Um, it's got a light kit. Light kit has two LED bulbs. Long lasting, energy efficient. Also has a shatter resistant bulb. Didn't break. But when it's installed and it's lit up, it looks just like frosted glass. Alright, so as you can see here, we've already unpacked the fan. Just a couple notes before we get started though. You want to make sure that your outlet box is marked acceptable for fan support. If it's not, you're going to want to swap it out. If you're placing this fan up in the ceiling where there's just light, chances are the outlet box is not acceptable for fan support. But check it out. If it is, great. If not, swap it out before we begin. Another note. Please make sure your electricity is turned off at the breaker box and at the wall switch. If you're not comfortable working around electricity, please consult with a licensed electrician. This is a super easy project, just have to have some safety measures in place, and I'm sure you can do it. Just follow along the video every step of the way. We'll get you there. Alright, so we've already unpacked the fan. We're just going to look in the manual, make sure we have all the parts here, and uh, that way we don't get stuck along the way. So first up, most important, fan motor. And have five blade brackets. Five blades. You have the mounting bracket and the canopy. We'll show you in the first step how to remove that to get started. As mentioned before, you have the light kit. This fan can be installed without the light kit. It includes the plug to do so. Got the shatter resistant bulb. Two LED bulbs. If you're going to install this without the light kit, the bulb can be used as a hat on your off time. If you're married, don't do that. You won't be married for long. Alright, also going to have a hardware pack. The hardware pack has the close to ceiling rubber gasket. It's got some plastic wire nuts, hanger pin and locking pin, and pull chain extensions. Alright, so before we get started, some tools we're going to need. Need a Phillips head screwdriver. We like to have a long one and a short one on hand. Got some wire cutters and strippers. Need some electrical tape. And of course a ladder. So uh, that's it. We're ready to begin. The mounting bracket comes pre-assembled inside the canopy. There are two standard screws, one on either side, and two J-slotted screws, one on either side. To remove the mounting bracket, first loosen and remove and save the two standard screws. and then loosen but do not remove the two screws in the J-slots. Once those screws are loosened, simply twist the mounting bracket and pull up to remove it from the canopy. This fan features a slide-on mounting bracket for easy installation. There are two slots in the mounting bracket that will align with the two screws in the outlet box. Just align the slots of the mounting bracket with those screws and slide to hold in place. This is just a demonstration of how it's done. To install the mounting bracket, use a screwdriver to loosen but not remove the two screws in the outlet box. With the flat side of the mounting bracket facing towards the ceiling, feed the house wires through the mounting bracket and align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws in the outlet box and then simply slide into place. Then use the screwdriver to completely tighten both of the outlet box screws to secure the mounting bracket to the ceiling. Make sure that both outlet box screws are completely tightened before proceeding with the installation. 
This next section is for close to ceiling installation without the downrod. If installing with a downrod, skip ahead to preparing the fan for downrod installation. Before beginning, make sure that both of the set screws on the motor collar are completely tightened. Next, use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove and save three of the six screws on the top of the motor housing. This is just every other screw. Once those three screws are removed and saved, locate the rubber gasket in the hardware pack. Feed the wires through the rubber gasket so that it rests on top of the motor housing. You'll notice the large holes in the rubber gasket will align with the three screws that remain in the motor, and the small holes will align with the screw holes from the screws that were just removed. Next, remove the decorative ring from the bottom of the canopy. The ring is held in place by three studs inside the canopy. Simply press each of those studs with your thumb to remove the decorative ring. Feed the wires through the smallest opening of the canopy so that the largest opening is facing towards the ceiling. You'll notice there are notched cutouts inside the canopy. Those cutouts will align with the screws that remain in the motor, and the small holes will align with the screw holes for the screws that were removed and saved. Secure the canopy to the motor using the three screws that were removed and saved. Insert the screw into the screw hole and use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten the screw. Repeat this process for the two remaining screws. Make sure all three screws are completely tightened. Before hanging the fan, it's a good idea to trim excess wires. To trim the wires, You'll measure about a foot from the top of the canopy. This is shown with the downrod, but the process is the same. Measure a foot from the top of the canopy, and then use a pair of wire cutters to cut the wires. Then use the strippers to strip off about three quarters of an inch of insulation from each wire. Once the wires are stripped, twist each end to make sure that there are no loose strands. Now the fan is ready to be hung. Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the hook on the mounting bracket that will align with the screw hole in the canopy. To hang the fan, you'll lift the assembly up and using the screw hole, not the J-slot, hang the fan on the hook. To hang the fan, lift the assembly to the ceiling and note the location of the screw hole in the canopy and the hook on the mounting bracket. You'll lift the fan assembly up to the ceiling and place the hook through the standard screw hole, not the J-slot. This will hold the fan in place for wiring. Do not leave the fan unattended while it is hanging like this. This next section covers installation with the down rod. If using close to ceiling method, skip ahead to wiring the fan. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, loosen but do not remove the two set screws on the motor collar. Next, unwrap the fan wires by removing the rubber band and then gently stretch them out. Once the wires are stretched out, it's a good idea to twist the ends of the wires together this will make routing the wires through the downrod much easier. Next, gently pull the green ground cable from inside the ball and downrod assembly. Route the wires through the bottom of the canopy until it touches the motor. Make sure the largest opening is facing the ceiling. Route the wires through the bottom of the downrod so that they exit the ball portion and gently pull them through until the downrod meets the motor collar. Align the holes of the downrod with the holes in the motor collar and insert the downrod into the motor collar. Then using the hanger pin, insert the hanger pin through the hole in the motor collar so it exits the opposite side. Insert the locking pin in the end of the hanger pin to secure it. The pin will snap in place when properly inserted. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten both set screws on the motor collar. Once the set screws are tight, you can allow the canopy to rest on the motor. Before hanging the fan, it's a good idea to cut the excess wire. This will make installation easier. To do so, measure about a foot from the top of the ball and downrod assembly, and then use a pair of wire cutters to cut the wire. Then use wire strippers to strip off about three quarters of an inch of the insulation from each wire. Once the wires are stripped, twist the ends to make sure that there are no loose strands. Now the fan is ready to be hung. 
Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the tab inside the mounting bracket that will align with the slot on the ball and downrod assembly. When hanging the fan, you'll insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the fan assembly until you feel the slot of the ball engage that tab in the mounting bracket. This is just a demonstration. To hang the fan, lift the entire assembly to the ceiling and note the location of the slot in the ball and the tab in the mounting bracket. Slide the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the assembly until you feel the slot engage that tab. The fan will drop slightly when properly seated and the fan will rotate no further. Begin wiring the fan by taking the green ground wire from the ball and downrod assembly and twisting that together with the green wire from the mounting bracket. If installing close to ceiling, there will only be the green ground wire from the mounting bracket. Connect those to the bare copper house wire. This is the ground connection. Once those wires are twisted together, secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Next, take the white wire from the fan and connect that wire to the white wire from the house supply lines. This is the neutral connection. Twist those two wires together and secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Finish the wiring by taking the blue and black wires from the fan and twisting those two wires together. Once those wires are twisted together, connect those to the black house wire. This is the power connection. Secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once all the wiring connections have been made, gently tuck the wires up into the mounting bracket and outlet box to make room for the canopy to attach. This section covers attaching the canopy for close to ceiling installation. If using the down rod, skip ahead to attaching the canopy down rod installation. To attach the canopy, lift the fan off the hook and then align the J slots of the canopy with the screws that were loosened in the mounting bracket. Then simply press up to the ceiling and twist the fan to engage the screws in the J slots and hold the fan in place. Use the screws that were removed in the first step and a Phillips head screwdriver and insert the screw into the standard hole of the canopy. Completely tighten that screw and repeat for the other screw. Once those screws are tightened, completely tighten the two screws in the J slots. Make sure all four screws are completely tightened. To attach the canopy, align the J slots of the canopy with the two screws that were loosened in the mounting bracket and then slide the canopy up and press up and twist to engage the screws in the J slots. Once the canopy is set, use the screws that were removed in the first step and insert the screw into the standard screw hole of the canopy and tighten using a Phillips head screwdriver. Repeat this for the other standard screw. Once those screws are tightened, Completely tighten the two screws in the J slots. Make sure all four screws are completely tightened. Before installing the blade arms, you'll need to remove the five rubber motor stops in the base of the motor. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen and remove these rubber motor stops. You can discard them once removed. They are just to prevent the motor from moving during shipment. The blade arms attach to the fan using two captive screws that are pre-installed in the blade arm. These screws will align with the screw holes in the base of the motor, and the alignment post on the blade arm will align with the long slot in the base of the motor. To install the blade arms, insert the alignment post into the long slot, and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten the two screws. Repeat this process for the four remaining blade arms. Make sure all of the blade arm screws are completely tightened before proceeding. This fan features quick install blades for easy installation. The blades are reversible, so choose the finish that you want. Make sure that finish is facing towards the floor. Then you'll align the keyhole slots of the blade, and then press down and pull away from the fan to install the blades. There's a locking mechanism that'll snap in place when the blade is properly seated. This is just a demonstration of how the blade system works. 
To install the blades, make sure that the blade finish that you want is facing towards the floor. Then align the keyhole slots with the grommets on the blade arm, press down and pull away from the fan to lock the blade in place. Make sure the locking mechanism snaps in place to make sure that the blades are secure. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. The light kit attaches to the fan using three pre-installed screws on the light kit. Those screws will align with the three screw holes in the switch cup of the fan. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove and save the three screws that are pre-installed on the light kit. Next, locate the white and blue wires inside the switch cup of the fan and gently pull them down. Connect the white wire from the fan to the white wire from the light kit by inserting the plugs together. And then connect the blue wire from the fan to the black wire from the light kit by inserting the plugs together. Notice that there's a notch cut out on the top of the light kit that will align with the reverse switch in the switch cup. Gently tuck the wires in and align the screw holes of the light kit with the screw holes in the switch cup of the fan and then use the three screws that were removed and saved to secure the light kit to the fan. Tighten all three screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. Next, install the two included bulbs by screwing them into the sockets. Next, remove the twist tie holding the center pull chain. Then remove the finial and bowl cap by unscrewing the finial from the threaded post of the light kit. Next, feed the off-center pull chain through the slot in the light bowl alignment plate on the threaded post of the light kit. When properly installed, the hole of the bowl will sit flush with the alignment plate on the light kit. Feed the pull chains through the center hole of the bowl until it's flush with that alignment plate and then use the bowl cap and feed the pull chains through the center hole and off center hole of the bowl cap and slide that up and onto the threaded post of the light kit. Secure the bowl cap using the finial. Feed the center pull chain through the finial and then screw the finial onto the threaded post of the light kit. Only finger tighten this. Do not use any tools to over tighten as it may strip the threaded post. The fan includes two pull chain extensions. Connect the ends of the pull chains to the pull chain extensions using the easy snap connections. Pull the fan center pull chain once to turn the light on. Pull it again to turn it off. Pull the fan's off center pull chain to control the speed of the fan. One pull for high, two for medium, three for low, and again to turn it off. The fan has a three-speed reversible motor. The reverse switch is located right above the light kit on the switch cup of the fan. Switch down creates a downward airflow for use in the hotter months, and switch up creates an upward airflow for use during the warmer months to pull warm air from the ceiling. Make sure the fan is off before attempting to reverse the fan's directions. To install the fan without the light kit, you'll first need to remove the hex nut holding the switch cap onto the light kit. Use a pair of pliers or a wrench to loosen the hex nut and then unscrew the hex nut from the threaded post of the light kit and then pull the light kit wires one at a time through the hex nut. Next, unscrew the switch cap from the light kit by turning it counterclockwise and unscrewing it from the threaded post. Once it's off the threaded post, pull the light kit wires one at a time through the center hole. Insert the plastic plug from the hardware pack into the center hole of the switch cap. Insert it into the hole and then press it until you feel it snap in place. Next, use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove and save the three pre-installed screws on the switch cap. You'll use these screws to attach the switch cap to the fan.
The notch cutout of the switch cap will align with the reverse switch and the switch cup at the base of the fan. And the three screw holes of the switch cap will align with the three screw holes in the switch cup of the fan. Align that notch cutout with the reverse switch and then insert the switch cap into the switch cup, aligning the screw holes. Then use the three screws that were removed and saved at the beginning of this step to attach the switch cap to the fan. Make sure all three screws are completely tightened. Finish the installation by attaching the pull chain extension to the fan's pull chain. Congratulations, the ceiling fan installation is now complete. Time to sit back, relax with a nice cold beverage, and enjoy your new ceiling fan. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe down below, and that'll help other people find it as well. And as we always say around here, keep it breezy.